Welcome back, Warrior. Were you battling serious stomach pain last night? Because I sure was. And that was crazy. <laughs> I basically threw up a couple times last night. And I mean, I guess you count it as a couple times if you had to go to the toilet a couple times. But like it was several times at the toilet. And anyway, hopefully you were not battling those kinds of wars. Um, stomach wars, body pain wars. It was, it was not good. And so needless to say, we skipped the gym this morning <laughs> and anything else we had going on this morning. Cause it's now the afternoon. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if it's this perimenopause thing or if it's something that I ate or if it's something that I'm breathing or... <laughs> Anything, who knows what it was. All I know is it was not nice and we need to move on with our lives now. So, um, we are we are on Second Nephi chapter 29. Yesterday we read chapter 28. I don't even know how many verses are in chapter 29. <laughs> Maybe three, we're hoping for three. Oh, but it's not that bad. It's 14 verses. Awesome. That means that we can maybe read chapter 30 also, and then we'll be so caught up and we'll be done early. That would be the best news ever. Okay, so here we go. Something in my eye. There. Anyway, chapter 29. Says, many Gentiles shall reject the Book of Mormon. They shall say, We need no more Bible. The Lord speaks to many nations. He will judge the world out of the books thus written. Okay. You know, we need our trusty, I was about to say, handy dandy notebook. <laughs> this is my handy dandy iPad, not handy dandy notebook. But you remember uh, Blue's Clues? Yep. We're rewatching those now that our older kid is no longer watching that. Now our littlest child is watching it. So it's kind of funny to relive those. Um, okay. Verse one, but behold, there shall be many at that day when I shall proceed to do a marvelous work among them that I may remember my cup among them. Hold on. Okay, yep, yeah, it's not. It's not a grammar check or any or gram, grammar error. Okay, that I may remember my covenants, which I have made unto the children of men, that I may set my hand again whew, the second time to recover my people, which are of the house of Israel. And also that I may recover or that I may remember the promises which I have made unto the Nephi and also unto thy father that I would remember your seed and that the words of your seed should proceed forth out of the mouth out unto your seed and my words shall hiss forth unto the ends thereof, or unto the ends of the earth, for a standard unto my people, which are of the house of Israel. Okay, we need to put friends, Mirabel, on top of this pterodactyl. No, that's a car. <laughs> Here you go. I'm always tall and say tall. Okay, so it says chapter 29 teaches why the Lord can bring forth more scripture than just the Bible. It is also a warning against those who reject the Book of Mormon. Teaching, uh, here's a teaching idea. Put a poster board in the center of the table and in the center of the poster write the phrase in verse 3 that says, A Bible, a Bible, we have got a Bible. Wait, didn't I? I think I said this one. Uh, I think I gave this idea this last, but it's fine in case you missed it. Um, we've got a Bible and there cannot be any other Bible and smaller words around. You may write the phrase that people may, you might use in our day, like the Bible is all I need, or God gave us the Bible and that is enough or any scripture other than the Bible is bad. As you study this chapter, challenge your family to look for how the Lord responds to those statements. <sighs> then invite your family to write responses right on the poster board of things they can say to teach someone that the Lord can bring forth more scripture, invite them to take the words in this chapter and write them in their own words. Like they might say them to, like they may, whoop, 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 whoop. like they might say them to someone else. 
so this is like a good practice for like missionary um, opportunities. Okay, and then in verse 1 and 2, the Lord is explaining how important the Book of Mormon will be in the day when he gathers Israel, the last days. The words of the Nephites and his words in the Book of Mormon will hiss forth unto the ends of the earth and be a standard to the house of Israel. His forth means to go forth with intensity. A standard or ensign is a flag that is raised during battle. It indicates citizen citizenry or who that army is. It is identity and points the soldiers to where they should gather this is a great this is a great imagery since the name israel means one who prevails with god or soldier of god these are they with whom god will use to spread forth his gospel so the book of mormon will be held up and bring israel back together mm, i love that okay <clears throat> some weirds happening in there Okay, um, President Ezra Taft Benson said, The Book of Mormon is to be used for a standard unto my people, which are of the house of Israel. The Lord says, and its words shall hiss forth unto the ends of the earth. We, the members of the church, and particularly the missionaries, have to be the hissers. Oh, that's awesome. Or the tellers and testifiers of the Book of Mormon unto the ends of the earth. Hey, I'm one of those testifiers. Okay. That is so wild, okay? The Book of Mormon. Is the great standard we are used to. Just kidding. We are. <laughs> we, we wish we were used to it. The great standard we are to use. It shows that Joseph Smith was a prophet. It contains the words of Christ. And its great mission is to bring men to Christ. And all other things are secondary the golden question of the Book of Mormon is, do you want to learn more of Christ? The Book of Mormon is the great finder of the golden contact. It does not contain things which are pleasing unto the world. And so the worldly are not interested in it. It is a great sieve, 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 end quote. Okay, now we're reading French. <laughs> Anyways, it's amazing. That was a great quote. President Ezra Taft Benson, Enzyme, January 1988. That he said that members of the church, particularly the missionaries, have to be the hissers or the tellers and testifiers of the Book of Mormon unto the ends of the earth. So it is our job to tell the world about the Book of Mormon. And the fact that I read this quote now and that I'm doing what I'm currently doing like means the world to me uh, it just kind of confirms to me that i'm doing what i need to be doing and that i love this so it's i find joy in this and anyways love it okay verses three to six and because my words shall hiss forth, many of the Gentiles shall say, A Bible, a Bible, we have got a Bible, and there cannot be any more Bible. But thus saith the Lord God, O fools, they shall have a Bible, and it shall proceed forth from the Jews, mine ancient covenant people. And what thank the what thank they, the Jews, for the Bible which they receive from from them? Yea, what do the Gentiles mean? Do they remember the travails and the labors and the pains of the Jews and their diligence unto me in bringing forth salvation unto the Gentiles? O ye Gentiles, have ye remembered the Jews, mine ancient covenant people? Nay, but ye have cursed them, and have hated them, and have not sought to recover them. But behold, I will return all these things upon your own heads, for I the Lord have not forgotten my people. Thou fool, that, say, that shall say a Bible, we have got a Bible, and we need no more Bible. Have ye obtained a Bible, save it were by the Jews? Okay, so... The irony here is the fact that they claim that they have a Bible, but they don't even really read it, right? Like, that's just wild. This is the prophecy about how many in the world will reject the Book of Mormon or additional scripture and say that they don't need any more scripture. The great irony here is that the Gentiles, not Jews, will claim to revere and honor only the Bible, but the Lord points out that this record came from the Jews, whom the Gentiles have persecuted. Well, that's also irony. <laughs> right? <clears throat> okay. 
One second, I need to get tissue. Okay, so verse 7 to 11, verses 7 to 11, it says, Know ye not that there are many nations, that, that there are more nations than one? Know ye not that I, the Lord your God, have created all men, and that I remember those who are upon the isles of the sea, and that I rule in the heavens above and in the earth beneath, and I bring forth my word unto the children of men, yea, even upon all the nations of the earth. Wherefore, murmur ye because that ye shall receive more of my word? Know ye not that the testimony of two nations, two nations is a witness unto you that I am God, that I remember one nation like unto another? Wherefore, I speak the same words unto one nation like unto another. And when the two nations shall run together, the testimony of two nations shall run together also. I think it's fantastic because I think it just kind of reaffirms all the things that Christ says when we read scriptures in the Bible and when we read scriptures in the Book of Mormon. It's just like, wait, what? Like, if you've ever read the Bible and the Book of Mormon at the same time, there's like this uh, chart. You know what? Maybe I will write that down to put it in the in the links. Okay. Um, there is a reading chart where you can read all the standard works. So it includes the Bible, Old Testament, the Bible's New Testament, the Book of Mormon, the Pearl, Brick, the Pearl of Great Price, and the Doctrine and Covenants. You can read all those scriptures in one year, and um, the magic of it is is that you see all of the different, um, how do I want to say it? Like, I'm just getting chills think, uh, thinking about it. I did it once, and it was fantastic. It's hard, but it was fantastic. It was like you could see what happened over here in Jerusalem and you were just like, what? That's wild. And then you see Nephi's family coming and then you're like, what? That's so crazy. And then you see like, um, you see like Christ being uh, crucified and then you see how it affected the whole rest of the world in the Book of Mormon. And, and it's just amazing. And then you see like, it's just like you just have to experience it for yourself. So I would recommend if you are looking for like a new way to read scriptures or if you're like, oh, I want to see the parallels a little bit more closely together. Um, I will put the link in the description of the 365 days of the standard works. Okay. And it's just like a reading chart. So it's not going to point out anything like those are the insights that you'll get as you read. So You'll just have to keep like a journal to 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 see everything, and because that's what I did, and that and because I was able to like see things and read things, and and it was just amazing. So link to three sixty five standard works chart. It is awesome. You will not regret that. Promise. Okay. Um. But and, and the fact that it is two nations testifying of Jesus Christ, it's just like a really powerful way to prove to yourself that the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ. But it also goes to prove that the Bible is also the word of God. So it's just awesome. Okay, um, <clears throat> verse 9, And I do this that I may prove unto many that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that I speak forth many words according to mine own pleasure. And because that I have spoken one word, ye need not suppose that I cannot speak another. Yeah, I it, like that's what's hard too, because it's like really you're going to limit God and his ability to communicate with his people. It seems weird when we when you actually think about what you're saying. So God only likes the people over there. That makes no sense. So... So yeah, it makes more sense that God would communicate with multiple peoples and require them to uh, write down the things that he's teaching. But also, like, not just the Bible and the Book of Mormon. I feel like there's so many more people that need to be, um, that maybe they're, we're missing their testimonies of Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? Like, if he can communicate with us through the Holy Ghost, okay, um with each of us through the Holy Ghost, why couldn't he communicate with two different peoples? Anyways, it's just some thoughts, you know? Anyway, so then he says, 
uh, wherefore I speak the same words unto one nation like unto another. And when the two nations shall run together, wait, did I just read that? No, that's good. Shall run to, I did say verse nine, didn't I? Okay, verse nine. And because, so according to my own pleasure. Okay, and because that I have spoken one word, ye need not suppose that I cannot speak another. For my work is not yet finished. Neither shall it be until the end of man, neither from that time henceforth and forever. How many books are there that speak about Jesus Christ? Like so many, right? And like, that's not a bad thing. Doesn't mean it's bad to have other books, you know? Um, I think it's fantastic to have multiple testimonies of Jesus Christ. I think it strengthens my testimony when I hear other people's testimonies about Jesus Christ. Um, and that like listening to other people's other people testify of Jesus Christ almost helps me put words to those to those feelings and to those those things that I believe um but that I haven't quite put words to if that makes sense okay uh wherefore verse 10 wherefore oh, there's like something right there wherefore because that ye have a bible ye need not suppose that it contains all my words neither need ye suppose that I have not caused more to be written it's true, right? Verse 11. For I command all men, both in the east and in the west, and in the north and in the south, and in the islands of the sea, that they shall write the words which I speak unto them. For out of the books which shall be written, I will judge the world, every man according to their works, according to that which is written. So I think it's so important for us to remember that the Lord is going to, the Lord requires us. He says he commands all men, both in, everywhere um to to write the words that he speaks to us that includes us like we need to write the words that he's speaking to us to ourselves and and what a powerful message we could share to our descendants as we share the words that the lord is is sending us those messages that he sends us are specifically for us but then also for our posterity Okay, um, and then it says, seeing how the Lord himself answers this statement gives us the perfect things we can say to help others have a chance to accept these truths and therefore help in gathering Israel. So yeah, we don't want to make people feel stupid when we're trying to tell them like, trust me, the Lord speaks to multiple people. You can't just be like, trust, you know? So verse seven says, there are more nations than one, which makes sense. God created all men. And he brings forth his word to all the nations of the earth. It makes sense that way. Verse 8, why should we murmur if we receive more of the Lord's word? Well, I'll answer that. Just because I think that we just don't want to be responsible for knowing more, right? Like, I think that the reason why we try to deny that there are more words is because we don't want to read them. It takes too long. And um, we don't want more commandments or requirements. And we feel like they're it's just too much responsibility it's like your parents giving you a lecture like you do not want to sit there longer than you need to you know but your parents are like yeah but i give lectures everywhere i give lectures here and then i give lectures there and i give lectures here don't you want to know all my lectures well no but then yes right like why would we want to listen to a parent who uh who loves us because they care about us and they know something that we don't know and we would be wise to listen to their words, right? And that's the same with, with Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father. Like, why wouldn't we want to know more of the Lord's word? If there's more of the Lord's words out there, why wouldn't we want to know them? And I'm not talking about like, oh, but you know, the sealed part of the Book of Mormon, they never like published that. And I'm just so stuck on that because I really wish I could read the sealed part. Well, have you, how many times have you read the open available part? Okay, not that many times to be crying about the fact that we don't have the sealed portion. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't deserve the sealed portion if we don't cherish the open portion already. Uh, so let's work on that. And then <clears throat> um, let's see. Then it says the testimony of two nations witnesses that God remembers both nations alike. He did not just teach the Jews. And that's true. Like, why would he only teach the Jews? He doesn't just love them. He loves everybody. But how can we know that he loves everybody if we don't accept words that he says to other people? We would only see that he loves one people. Does that make sense? So if, we, if you truly believe that God loves everyone, then that means that it's okay for God to 
communicate with more than one people. Just because he was there in person to the Jews doesn't mean he couldn't uh, communicate with the rest of the world in a different way. Um, and in person as well, because the Book of Mormon has uh, the resurrected Jesus Christ in um, Third Nephi. So you can see that there. But, like, he worked, like, look, there's so many, like, these are the highlighted things about Jesus Christ. Um, so people were still getting revelation from the Lord. So it's just, it's just awesome. Okay, so then uh, the book of, verse 8, again, the Book of Mormon and the Bible go together. They're like, they're like besties, you know? And then... The verse nine, both books prove that God is the same. Yep, because he's, the, the same patterns happen in the same, uh, at the same, like not at the same time, but like at the, like he's, com these are his commandments over here and these are his commandments over here. Those commandments are the same, right? And then the Lord can speak when he desires to speak, for sure. And just because, ooh, hold on, verse nine. Just because he has spoken to one nation does not suppose he will not speak to another. That makes sense. His work is not yet finished, right? So what are we trying to say? Like, we're trying to limit God and his ability to, like, communicate to us. But then we have to say, like, oh, but he's done talking. So he's done talking to all of us at the same time. So then how do you even get revelation? His work is not yet finished. So we can we get that continuous revelation that... Uh, there was a talk about that in this pastoral conference, the continuous revelation that the Lord, since he's continuing to work his miracles and amongst us, he like revelation is just like a continuous flow. So if we believe that, then it's possible that the Book of Mormon can exist, right? Okay, verse 10. Do not suppose that the Bible contains all of the Lord's words. Well, there's got to be lots of words that he wants to say. And so it makes sense that there would be multiple books to put them in. Okay, verse 10. Do not suppose that the Lord has not caused other words to be written. Yeah, like why are we limiting his ability to command? We can't. Like he's, he's, he's God. He can do anything. Okay, so the devil wants men and women. Ooh. Okay, so we lost that. But the devil wants men and women to think that God is no longer speaks to us. Um, but why would he, why would the Lord stand idly by while Satan is loose on the earth? Does that make sense? He's not going to be an idle uh, part of our lives. He is going to be an active part of our lives because he knows that we need him. And in order for us to use him in our lives, we need to know who he is and what he's capable of helping us with, which is everything. But that's why these scriptures have been given to us, have been provided for us to guide us, to help us, to, have, to be a tool, to be a weapon, to be everything to us. So, okay, uh, we were reading uh, verse 11, right? We were at a verse 11. Let's see. Please help. Okay. No, sorry. We're on verse 11, chapter 29. <laughs> so this, my iPad ran out of battery. So you might be wondering, why does her iPad run out of battery? We're not even on there for very long. Well, that would be because I leave it on until, because I'm setting everything up. And apparently it takes me so long to set up everything that the battery sometimes runs out. Okay, so, um, so verse 11. For I command all men, both in the, oh yeah, we did read that. So we're on, we're on verse, oh, we were on verse 12. Okay, for behold, I shall speak unto the Jews. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so, so he's gonna judge us from the books that are written. Right, um, from the works that are that are written also. Um, and I think he's gonna judge us from our own things that we write, right? Because when that that I think what we write kind of explains the things that we understand. And so like I feel like 
sometimes we don't understand things and that's why we do certain the things that we do and i think if we understood them more we wouldn't do those things and so but i think that he's all, not just going to judge us from the books that that he caused to be written like the scriptures but he's also going to um judge us from the books that we're writing from the book that from the journals that we keep uh, because those will help Those are the ones that help us understand what we understand, if that makes sense. Obviously, he knows what we understand and the intentions of our hearts. So it's not like he has to go through our book. But he's probably going to point it out like, Linda, I thought you, uh, I thought you said that you really love this one part. And I'll be like, well, yeah. And then he'll be like, well, why'd you do that then? I'll be like, ooh. Right? Like, that's one of the, I think that's how it's going to get played out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll have to tell him what's up. And then he'll still be like, okay. That's why. That's why I suffered for you. Because I didn't think you were going to understand that all the way. Just in case. None of this stuff makes any sense to anyone. Heavenly Father sent his son, Jesus Christ, to help us. To help bridge that gap. Because some of us are just not going to get it. Okay. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Do you need help? She's so sweet. She's the best. You're the best. Thanks, miss. I want the shoes. I love these. Thanks, Flora. You're the sweetest, miss. Daddy, I hope you know you better make sure you not say so much when you read six times. <laughs> yep. I kind of cry a lot when I read scriptures, huh? There she is. Hi. <laughs> thanks for my thanks for my tissues. Welcome. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's finish this. Yep. Um Nephi say shall write it. And they and I shall also speak unto other tribes of yep. 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 Yep, here we go. For yeah. behold, I shall speak unto the Jews, and they shall write it. And I... Uh, <clears throat> and they shall write it. And I shall also speak unto the Nephites, and they shall write it. And I shall also speak unto the other tribes of the house of Israel, which I have led away, and they shall write it. And I shall also speak unto all nations of the earth, and they shall write it. And it shall come to pass that the Jews shall have the words of the Nephites, and the Nephites shall have the words of the Jews, and the Nephites and the Jews shall have the words of the uh, of the lost tribes of Israel, and the lost tribes of Israel shall have the words of the Nephites and the Jews. And it shall come to pass that my people, which are of the house of Israel, shall be gathered home unto the lands of their possessions, and my word also shall be gathered in one, and I will show unto them that fight against my word and against my people, who are of the house of Israel, that I am God. And that I covenanted with Abraham that I would remember his seed forever. What if the words that are written from the lost tribes are our words to our family? And not so much, not, and not the words that we're waiting for other people to discover for us. What if they're just the words that we are receiving from the Lord and the revelation that we're getting that is going to matter? What if, that, what if that's the case? What if this whole time we're waiting for scriptures to be unlocked because we think there's some kind of hidden message in there? that is going to bless our lives immensely. 
But instead, what if it's the things that are locked inside of our hearts that need to be shared with those that we love and with those that we love who will not be present because we won't be alive to be with them. We won't be here to be with them. What if it's our words that they, that they desperately need? I think that I like that. And the read it, live it for today. Well, I mean, actually, I, I would challenge you also to start your journal. Start writing something. You just use like a half journal, you know. If it's too much overwhelming, start with even a half of that. They have like those cute little composition books. Just write stuff. Just write things of your heart. The things that the Spirit is telling you. Write those things. Because somebody somewhere down the line sometime is going to need you. Need those words that are there. To strengthen them. To know who you trusted in when life got tough. Because social media doesn't really do a good job of uh, retaining that information for us, right? Because who's writing that there? Maybe that's what we can do. Maybe that's what our challenge can be. Not just to keep it in our journal, but to keep it, to, to testify of Christ in our, on our social medias. Um, the Read It, Live It says, there are two lines that bring great hope in this chapter. I, the Lord, have not forgotten my people, is one, and my work is not yet finished, is two. So remind someone of this today. And I'm reminding you of that right now. Until tomorrow, stay strong, warrior.